Hi, good morning, Escape family. I am Faith. This is our devotional hour. If you're joining us for the first time, this is Escape Forever Free, where we work together to restore physical, mental, spiritual, and social wholeness. We thank you for joining our family, and we pray that you'll be blessed by this devotional. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for taking us to this another worship session. We thank you for the rest that we got in the night that we slept. We thank you, Father, that you have spared us with a purpose in mind. Help us through your Holy Spirit guidance to know our purpose. Help us through your Holy Spirit working to be submissive to your purpose and to your will. And help us, Father, to live the victorious life because we want to be home with you when you return. Have mercy upon us now and accept our worship, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so as per usual, we recite our memory text. Let's do our memory text from our quarterly lesson studies, um, which we have each week. So the memory text is Isaiah 40, verse 9, and it reads, O Zion that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Memory text, Isaiah 40, verse 9. O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, Lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Memory text, Isaiah 40, verse 9. O Zion that bringest good tidings, Get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem that bringest good tidings, Lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid, say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Memory text, Isaiah 40, verse 9. O Zion that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Amen. We thank God for helping us to commit this scripture this week to memory. And we pray that as his Holy Spirit directs us, we'll be able to use it to help others and to point all to Jesus Christ in his own timing. Amen. So we're going to move into our hymn, and then we're going to do our reading for the morning. So our hymn this morning is hymn number 608 from our Adventist hymnal, and it is entitled, Faith is the Victory. Along the hills of light, we Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Each fall and veils below, let all our strength be heard. Fit is the victory we know that all overcomes the world. Faith is a victory. Faith is a victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. On every hand the foe we find drawn up in dread array. 
with tents of ease be left behind and onward to the fray. Salvation helmet on each head with truth all girt about. The earth shall tremble needs a tread and echo with our shout. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him that overcomes the foe, white raiments shall be given. Before the angels ye shall know his name confessed in heaven. Then onward from the hills of light, all trots with love of flame, we'll vanquish all the host of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, all oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Amen. May God give us his faith. All right, we're going to do this morning's reading, which is coming from Marindafa for February 19, an Ellen G. White devotional. And it reads... Memory text, 1 Peter 4, verse 7. The end of all things is at hand. Be he therefore sober and watch unto prayer. The faith that works. Do you believe that the end of all things is at hand? That the scenes of this earth's history are fast closing? If so, show your faith by your works. A man will show all the faith he has. Some think they have a good degree, a good degree of faith, when, if they have any, it is dead, for it is not sustained by works. Faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone, quote-unquote. Few have that genuine faith which works, which works by love and purifies the soul. But all who are accounted worthy of everlasting life must obtain a moral fitness for the same. The scripture says, Quote, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall be, but we know that when, let me read it again, sorry. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, and every man that hath his hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. End of quote. This is the work before you. You must experience a death to self and must live unto God. Quote, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek ye those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. End of quote. Self is not to be consulted. Pride, self-love, selfishness, avarice, covetousness, love of the world, hatred, suspicion, jealousy, evil surmising, must all be subdued and sacrificed forever 
say those again. Pride, self-love, selfishness, avarice, covetousness, love of the world, hatred, suspicion, jealousy, evil surmising must all be must all be subdued and sacrificed forever. When Christ shall appear, it shall not be to correct these evils and then give a moral fitness for his coming. This preparation must all be made before he comes. It should be a subject of thought, of study, and earnest inquiry. What shall we do to be saved? What shall be our conduct that we may show ourselves approved of God? When tempted to murmur, censor, and indulge in fretfulness, wounding those around you, and in so doing, wounding your own soul, oh, let the deep, earnest, anxious inquiry come from your soul. Shall I stand without fault before the throne of God? Only the faultless will be there. None will be translated to heaven while their hearts are filled with the rubbish of earth. Every defect in the moral character must first be remedied. Every stain removed by the cleansing blood of Christ and all the unlovely, unlovable traits of character overcome. This morning, we are guided to understand clearly that our faith needs to be firm and strong in these last days. As we aim to have the victory over sin and this world, we must put practical steps in place in our daily situations to exercise our faith, to overcome our temptations, and to strengthen ourselves not to yield to the temptations and sin. We realize here that we must be ready when Christ comes because he's, when he comes, he's going to be doing translation, not transformation. No fixing will be done, only reception. So as we go through this, the rest of this week, as we go through this weekend, this being our last devotional for this week, may we seek God. May we fall on our knees. May we have meditation in our hearts and our minds. What was our week like? Wherein have we sinned against God, ourself, and our fellow men? And in that meditation, may we find true repentance as we confess and repent of our sins. We do not have time to take sin around for a while until we feel like dealing with it. We must constantly be ridding ourselves of the baggages of sin because as today's devotional reminded us, we must be pure and holy and perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect without fault, perfect in character because no faults will be entering heaven. I'm glad to say and to know and to share that faith works. So step out in faith this week, as we the end of this week, as we go into this weekend, as we go into our Sabbath, as we go into our worship experiences and find ourselves falling before the cross, repentively empty ourselves of sins and surrender ourselves to be subdued entirely to the Holy Spirit so we can go forward and live through the Holy Spirit's help the sinless life. It is possible because Christ came in human form, though maintaining an amount of divine be um, form and he overcomes sin. We too have access to that divine power while living in our human flesh. Take a step of faith and reach out to God to be led and to be fully possessed by his Holy Spirit, which is the only way we can have this overcoming power and that our faith can become fruitful works. May God help us all. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for another devotional time together. We thank you for the message that has given us a stern warning to know that we do not have time to delay. We must now step out in faith and allow faith to work through us to bring us to the perfect place that we need to be in our characters. We remember that we are reminded that we need to be doing cleaning work. So we need to go to the closets of our life and empty them of all the garbage of this world that we have been storing up. Some of which we have been petting that nobody can touch and nobody can talk about. Some of some of which we have been we've been covering with self-love and selfishness. Oh Jesus, have mercy upon us. This morning we all lay guilty. I don't know about anybody else, but I am guilty before this message. And so I beg, Holy Spirit, help me to be subdued entirely so I will not harbor hate. I will not have har harbor evil surmising. I will not harbor self-love. I will not harbor pride and all those traits that are marring our character and are taken away our hopeful destiny of entering heaven. Oh Jesus, this morning, today, save all of us in your mercy, we pray. Cleanse us through the blood of Jesus Christ from all of these stains of unrighteousness and of sin and give us a, a spirit that is pure and holy and help us to keep our foot firm and grounded and to follow after truth and light from this day forward. Help us to continuously confess like Job did before you in case you might have sinned again and receive forgiveness so our character can be perfect. We beg for the Holy Spirit implants, to be implanted in us, the fruits of the Spirit, so that through the fruits of the Spirit, we can indeed accomplish the perfection of character as they ripen and become fully mature within us. Save us, we pray, Jesus, because our time is short. And if this is our last time together in devotional, may none, no one in the hearing of this devotional be found wanting when they are weighed in the scale. With an, and that when you come, if we should sleep before you return, may we truly rise in the resurrection that takes us to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Escape family, please have a repentive week, a repentive um, worship experience, and may you continuously stay on the path of repentance as your faith becomes work in your life. See you next week.